Shalom party people and welcome to the 12th city. We are rocking it out in the month of June. <laughs> Shout out to Refuge Medical for coming up with that one. Rocking the rucksack at late morning because off work and have the opportunity to sleep in and spend time with the fam and it's been very, very wonderful. Uh, so wanted to chit chat with you cool party people about communication. So we're gonna communicate about communicating. And, you know, we can talk verbal, we can talk nonverbal, we can talk, you know, a million and one things, but communication is one of those that, regardless of how good you are at communication, you're bad at it. Um, and I am saying that to myself more than anybody else. Um, I, I think I'm a relatively good talker. I, I have words sometimes, but just because I have words and I can actually talk to people from time to time doesn't mean that I'm a good communicator. Uh, does not mean that I am an effective communicator. And I think that is where the crux of the matter is, is not just communicating, but communicating effectively. So I won't talk about it a ton, but I did um, in the different capacity, but in the same career field that I'm currently in, um, I had the opportunity to um, put on a different uniform from time to time and go help when people needed help. And it was in a correction setting. And sometimes that was go tie people up in pretzels and take them to where they didn't want to go. And sometimes that was hey, they don't want to exit the area that they are in and we desperately need them to exit this area. And usually they're posing a danger to themselves or somebody else when that happens. And so we have to go in, speed, surprise, violence of action and get them out. And in those type of situations, you know, without compromising tactics, without compromising, you know, OPSEC, as some cool people would say, um, you really had to have very effective nonverbal communication. Your team would have a team leader and that person would be the one who would be verbally communicating, but there would be a lot of nonverbal cues that would go about throughout the whole group. So that way everybody knew, hey, we're gonna do this at this time, I'm gonna go here at this time, and you're gonna react accordingly. You know, A, B, C, D have um, a set plan and then we had contingencies for when stuff went sideways because um, in that type of environment, especially when we needed to go get somebody out of a place that they didn't need to be in and they didn't want to leave and we had to go in with speed, surprise, and violence of action to get them out without harming them or allowing anybody on our team to come to harm um, while doing this on camera and having a lawyer review every action that you do very, very closely with a fine tooth comb. There, there had to be a lot of very effective nonverbal communication just as much as the verbal communication coming from the team lead. And one of the aspects is that your number one man, um, the drag handle on his vest was always had a hand in it of the person behind him. And that was in the event that that number one man who was the one who was in the most danger, um, cause there could be a unseen weapon. There could be um, just a situation where he needs to get pulled out that he's so laser focused on what his job is. And rightfully so, he's so laser focused on what his job is that that team lead may see something that he doesn't. Um, you know, the coach sees something that the you know, that the tight end doesn't, or the coach sees something that even the quarterback doesn't. And having the ability to non-verbally communicate to uh, the people behind the number one man, hey, get him out of there as quick as possible. Um, and there's a technique that I won't go into, but that number one man in the event of an emergency will come flying out of that area uh, to the point that he has several, several people pulling his weight 
And I have experienced that a couple of times when I needed to come flying out of that area. And the people behind me had my back and non-verbally they were given that cue of get them out of the area ASAP. And uh, prior conversation with a very, very wonderful gentleman who has kicked me where I have needed to be kicked and gotten me in a better headspace. I was telling him about one of those situations the other day and comparing it to um, a situation that was going on at our church. Um, and without air airing dirty laundry or anything like that, because some of this is other people's stories that I just don't feel like I have the right to share. Uh, there was a verbal disagreement that got pretty heated um, over a situation at our church. And I honestly, even years removed from this, don't know who was in the right and who was in the wrong about it. Um, but this verbal communication situation that went sideways because of assumptions, and that's where a lot of breakdowns and communications are, is we have assumptions. Uh, and more on that a little bit. Um, but I brought up a point and was just like, hey, listen, this is what scripture says directly about this situation. And maybe I don't know everything about the situation and I'm okay with not knowing everything about the situation because it's not all my business. But just as someone who is friends with everybody involved in this situation, like this is directly what scripture has to say about the situation. Why was not, or why was this not considered in your decision? Because it really seems like you just made this decision out of the blue. And my wife comes up behind me and my wife is shorter in stature. She's not tiny, but she is shorter in stature and she does not weigh very much. And she grabbed the back of my shirt and pulled and literally it felt like getting removed from one of those sticky situations <laughs> at my work. And like I came flying out of that room and I absolutely know that the most high had a hand in that. Um, but you know, there's, there's situations where that nonverbal is really going to matter. And that was one of those where it was just like, hey, it's it's time to exit the AO, like now. So, um, bringing up some more communication things. This is just 100% communication failure on my part, because um, we're talking about assumptions, and that, that's where one of the big breakdowns is. Um, so, I, I told my wife last night that I was going to, take my son uh, for a ruck march this morning. I'm going to throw him in the stroller and we were going to go for a walk. Uh, and I just assumed that she knew that I was going to be leaving uh, and had the some months old rolling around in the living room floor. I loaded up my two-year-old and we went ahead and left and my wife was like hey I didn't know you left the house I wish you had told me so that way I knew to you know have eyes on the uh, on the some months old and I was well I'm so sorry that was my fault I thought you knew I was leaving um, but that's I assumed and yeah do you hear the cows yeah what did the cows say moo yeah very good so I just assumed that she knew, and that's what bit me in the rear, uh, was the breakdown in that communication. Yes, it is an airplane. And, you know, this is coming directly on the tails of my wife and I meeting with some people that we love. Uh, to just help us talk over some things because if y'all didn't know um, being parents is stressful 
And I, I think we're doing an okay job. Um, and the reason I think we're doing an okay job is because we're always worried about how good of a job we're actually doing. We're always worried about how our kids are turning out. And not that like we're super fearful or anything, but it's just that always like, hey, are we doing this right? Um, is it a constant, you know, question that we have. Um, and that, you know, puts strain on marriage. That makes life hard because not only are you sleep deprived with a nursing some months old, and not only are you, you know, just worn out from trying to make sure that your two year old is wore out. Um, so that way they actually get adequate sleep and then maybe you will too. Um, you know, just there's been aspects over the last little while where we've been ships in the night and we haven't been able to have an adult conversation that's been longer than a few minutes. And so we were trying to be proactive and we told these friends, hey, we really wanna meet with you guys uh, so we can just talk um, and hey, here's what we're going through and we would really appreciate your input. And we knew that we weren't great communicators. Um, I, I would argue that we are better communicators now than when we got married several years ago, but uh, we're still not great communicators with each other. And these people that we were meeting with were able to provide us with some real insight. And my wife and I had a conversation after these people that we love finished talking to us and left the house. And we realized some things about each other that we just had had serious miscommunications about. Um, she had been desperately wanting me to step up and help spiritually lead our household, which I'm totally on board with. Um, I had honestly given up, and that's another failure on my part. I had honestly given up um, because I knew we were both opening our Bibles on a very regular basis and reading. I just didn't think that she was as interested in the things that I was studying. Uh, and, you know, we've, we pray together, you know, at meals, but we just hadn't spent any real time praying together often. Um, there was a situation um, very, very closely related to the story I was sharing earlier about the problem going on at our church. And she had made the comment, um, and this, this problem's well over at our church. It's, it's moved on and people have healed. Um, but uh, this was years ago and she made the comment, I've never seen you pray so much. And I, I pray often, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but you know, I pray often, but she's like, I have never seen you pray so much. And I was like, well, this is one of those situations where I don't know if there's anything that has mattered as much up until this point um, as the broken relationships that are going on with people that we love. And, you know, we, we believe that the Father was telling us to stay and be peacemakers. And that made no sense to us. We, we were seriously considered leaving over it um, to the point where we were about to. And that, that still small voice was, no, I want you to stay. <laughs> and are you, are you sure? <laughs> I want you to stay. Really? Did I stutter? Yes, sir. So, I mean, that, that conversation happened. And, you know, that's another form of communication that could be whole whole much longer point in the video, but um, back to where I was getting with my wife. Uh, she was like, hey, I want to read scripture together. I want to spend more time praying together. And just because I'm not giving you the input or the feedback that you think I should be giving you, I'm still getting a lot out of this. And so we... Uh, were gifted a, a copy of the scriptures by that dear friend who has kicked me in the nards and helped put me in the right state of mind that um, I used to not be in. And I've got a lot of Bibles. Um, and speaking directly to you, sir, um, the reason I said what I said when you gifted it to me um, and did what I did afterwards 
is because I have so many copies. Um, I understand that you give them away for free, um, but you, you've got a whole lot of other things that are going on that are expensive. And yes, I know you didn't have to pay shipping on that, um, which shipping is not free, but um, that's why I said and did what I did afterwards, um, which I'm sure you know that. But I have plenty of copies of the Bible. And I'll tell you what, we're both very interested in this copy of the scriptures. And we spent quite a lot of time reading it uh, and had a, some good prayer time last night. And, you know, this is something that, um, that I have been wanting for my wife and I, and something that apparently she has been wanting for both of us. And we've just had such a breakdown in communication that um, we were both content in doing this on our own in the same house instead of doing this together. And that has led to some phenomenal conversations um, and helping us to just air out some things that needed to be aired out. So directly to you again, sir, thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, as far as communication goes in general, I would say in my experience, assumptions have led to a lot of the breakdown in communications. Um, and a lot of the successes have been in the, hey, this needs to be said, whether um, I think you know this or not. And as far as the nonverbals go, um, that's just a skill that comes with time, especially the more experience you have with somebody and are on the same brain waves as them. So that way you can very clearly articulate to them what needs to happen without ever opening your mouth. But like a wise man in a film has said, that's all I got to say about that. So go do hard things.